Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. I can see there's a couple of you here already. Let's have a little look. Oh, <laughs> Lily, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. That's going to go to Happy Endings, the Animal Rescue. Thank you. And Rich Mitch is here. Hi, Rich. I'm on the heavy pain tonight. Oh, no. Sorry to hear that. Maybe fleeting. Okay, understood. Um, we've got Scott here as well. And I've just realised I haven't got my laptop, which has the comments. It's a lot easier for me to read. So bear with me and I'll get it and then I'll be able to read. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Is that it? No. Here it is. Oh, sorry about that. Ugh. Um, I wasn't going to do a stream. Well, I, I was to initially. I was thinking of doing a stream. And then I felt quite tired. I don't know why, but I just felt really tired. And I was thinking, oh, I'll grab an early night. I've had a couple of drinks. Uh, but I put the music on <laughs> and I started singing along. And I livened up a little bit. So I don't want to go mental because I am a little bit tired. Um, I want to get a nice early night. So I'm not going to go crazy. But I wanted to do a, a little live, a little check-in with you all. And yeah, just to kind of celebrate my 5K. It's only taken me, what, eight or nine years. <laughs> uh, but I'm here. I'm, I'm at 5K or thereabouts, when I look on my analytics, I'm about seven short of 5K, but if you look at me as a viewer, I think it says 5K. So I'm just trying to find, trying to get my laptop to load up, and then I can see your comments properly. So I can see comments coming in, but they're fleeting. Here we are, right. Okay, the video is loading, and Oops, taking its time. Come on, video. Here we go. Oh, got an advert. Bloody adverts. <laughs> right, here we are. I've got comments now. I'm all right then. Uh, so Scott says, hey, Claire. And congrats. John saying, hey, y'all. Chris, hi, Chris. Thank you. Says, congrats. JC Russell is here as well. Um... And Sal says, hi all, hi Sal. Sal's just done a nice video on a uh, Olympia. I think it's, I, I thought it was gonna be a flanker, but in the end, I think you said it's all in your description. It's basically the same as the original Olympia. It's just a special bottle. But anyhow, still a good video. If anyone is interested, check out Sal's video. And Oh, uh, I'm not quite caught up. Here we go, here we go. Uh, Sal saying congratulations, Claire. JC Russell's got a new cologne. What have you got, JC Russell? Dr. Vishal Sankapal, congratulations, much love from India. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. And Chris Hawalek, congrats, Claire. Scent of the day, anyone? Yes, do share your scent of the day, night, whatever because we like to do that. I'm gonna tell you mine, but they're kind of part of the, the stream, so I'm not gonna go there just yet. Um, yeah, so it was a collector's edition, the Olympia one that Sal reviewed. I think, is it, was it called Opus? Or something beginning with O? <laughs> or I could be wrong. And so JC Russell's bought Eternity by Calvin Klein. Classic, classic fragrance. Thank you very much. Uh, for the congrats as well there and Jennifer McRae saying good evening and good evening to Jennifer so uh, drink of the night is the usual vodka diet coke this is my third and final one ah, cheers the scent of the night will be sharing in a moment I've also got some samples, if I feel lively enough, I've got quite a few samples here I could uh, talk about. Sal is wearing Olympia Onyx, so it's called Onyx, the, new, the um, special edition Olympia. Robert Crawford says, well done, uh, 5,000. 
Hi everybody, Saturday night. Claire didn't realise she was getting dressed up for me tonight. <laughs> I've been wearing this dress all day. But no, if you wanna, yeah, okay. No, I did, I got dressed up just for you. <laughs> um, Bow Choi says, congrats, nice dress. Thank you very much. Do you know what? My friend picked this dress out for me years ago. She said, oh, I think that'll really suit you. Not a colour I ever, ever choose. And it's the weirdly the dress I get the most comments on when so even I got stopped in the street the other day by someone to tell me that they loved the colour of the dress. Yeah, so it's funny. It's a compliment getting, top compliment getting dress. <laughs> uh, Jennifer's wearing Alien Eau de Parfum. Empty Sense says double congrats. Thank you very much. Joss is here, she says congratulations, and Annie, thank you very much girls, much kindness. Dion is wearing Heliotrope by Reminiscence, very nice. And we're still catching up. Chris says hashtag whack pack, indeed. <laughs> oh, thank you Joss. And uh, Chris says I agree with Eugene, I'm not sure, I missed something there. Um, I missed a comment there, but I usually agree with Eugene as well. <laughs> Unless he's raising hell, then I agree even more. <laughs> oh, is Eugene here? Um, or is it? Oh, yeah, he is. There he is. You, uh, Claire looking fire. Congrats on the milestone. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I definitely do agree with you. <laughs> uh, Chris is wearing low deceit, poor hom. Uh, Mia's here. Hi, Mia. Uh, she says congrats. And Dion says green is definitely your colour, Claire. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's weird because I don't actually, I don't seek out this colour ever. I don't look for it. I don't. I like blues. I like purples, maybe pinks. But yeah, I never go for green. It's uh, probably because my mum and her mum were both mad on green. Like they wanted green, uh, green everything. And my mum grew up with green like curtains in the house, green carpets even. It was sort of in the <laughs> 60s and 70s. So, um, yeah. Uh, Mia says, I can't even hear. I just popped in to say hello. It was nice to see you, Mia. <laughs> Whether you can hear me or you just have to lip read. <laughs> um, right then. So, uh, if you haven't already done so, do share your scent of the night and your drink slash snacks of the evening. Mine's the usual vodka diet coke, no snacks. I am carb, well, I say carb, I'm not carb free because everything's got carbs, but I'm low carb in it, have been for a little while. I say a little while, it felt, it's felt like a little while. <laughs> I've been low carb in it for about a week. So that's why I burnt those pizza boxes the other day. I had a steak, ribeye steak and salad. It was very, very nice. It was yummy. <clears throat> Um, Eugene says green is your colour and I'd love to smell Mademoiselle Guerlain on you. Oh, I used to have that and then, um, yeah, I sold it because I wasn't so keen on the um, uh, galbanum in the opening, but I love the marshmallow that you get later. So but I ended up selling it. I never wore it. Uh, Scott is wearing Grand Soir. And D-O-T-N squash, drink of the night. Drink of the night, squash. <laughs> Empty Scent is wearing, Empty Scent is wearing, Bentley. Oh, thank you, Tina. Uh, congrats, Wood, Sage and Sea Salt, Tina's wearing. Thank you so much. So, as I said earlier, uh, the Super Chat's still going to the Animal Rescue here in Kent southeast of England, so that is very, very kind of you, Tina, thank you. And... Jennifer says, congrats, 5K is amazing, green looks beautiful on you, thank you. <laughs> um, and... Sal has got, uh, I believe that's a red wine from the emoji there. Robert says, uh, was Lombra Fauve, oh, gonna sneeze, I promise I'm not ill, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I promise I'm not ill, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, he was wearing a lumber of faux, and um, that was today. And now he's wearing imaginary author's cape heartache. John is, I know what John's wearing. John's wearing rolling in love because he got a brand new bottle today and he is rolling in love. <laughs> right, thank you for the bless you. And Joss says Gesundheit, which I am guessing is German for bless you maybe. Uh, I don't speak German, but that sounds maybe like it could be. Let me know Joss. Uh, right then, so um, what am I going to talk about? <laughs> uh, Joss says yes, my spelling may be shite. John says matrivoti, matrivoti, definitely don't know what that one is John. And Yara says hi, hi Yara. Right then, what are we going to talk about? Right, so I'm going to start with my sense of the night and I say sense. So I wasn't going to do a stream when I started spraying myself with various fragrances, but uh, they're the ones I'm going to talk about because they're all kind of special to me. You would have heard about them from me a lot. So this is not going to be anything new, but my scents of the night are uh, on one arm is my beloved La Belle from Jean-Paul Gaultier. Super sweet pear, sugary, kind of woodsy, vanillary type thing. That's on the inside of my arm, I think. And then on the other side of my arm is Clean Reserves Radiant Nectar. And that's actually what I'm wearing all around here as well. So this is another pear fragrance. This one is actually probably got quite similar ingredients to Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Belle because it's also got pear. I feel like both have got Ambroxan. This one has ambrette, so it's musky, but to me it smells like biscuits. It smells like a biscuity base with some sweet pear. And the Jean-Paul Gaultier is more like a pear crumble, more vanilla. This isn't so much vanilla. If there is vanilla in there, it's, it's just blended in so that you don't really pick it out. And they kind of go well together. So I thought one side is that's La Belle, and then the other side is the Radiant Nectar. So, and then all around here for the Radiant Nectar. So that's one of my scents of reaching 5K. We've got Clean Reserve, Radiant Nectar, and Jean-Paul Gaultier La Belle. Uh, Valadina says, hi, hi, Valadina. Oh, John Snow says it means spanner, that word he said, matrivioti. Matrivoti, is it Matrivoti or Matrivoti? Is it German? It feels like it might be Italian or something. Annie says, no prizes for guessing that La Belle will be there. <laughs> yes, you were right. Uh, Valadina, it's my birthday and that's what I'm wearing tonight for dinner, La Belle. Oh, happy birthday, Valadina. Come on, let's all sing it together now. Happy birthday to you. You better be singing at home. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Valadina. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Everyone's wishing her happy birthday. John Snow says it's Estonian. There's one in here who loves you, Claire. She's usually shy. Oh, there's an Estonian in. Okay, I've been to Estonia. I went to Tallinn when I worked on a cruise ship and I got a tattoo. It was quite a bad tattoo. Uh, because they didn't speak English and they didn't quite understand so they gave me a glow-in-the-dark tattoo so I had to get it covered up because it was also a bit crooked and wrong um, but Tallinn was beautiful what's the tattoo it's a lizard yeah so uh, it's a lizard on my ankle I don't think it's one of those you have to hold the UV up to it um, which I didn't know they were going to do until afterwards when he said bloody bloody blah 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 in Estonian and I said hmm 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 and then he held a light up to my ankle and the, the tattoo glowed <laughs> so then when I went to a tattoo studio in the UK when I got home and said I don't really like this tattoo what can you do He's, and I said, oh, and it glows in the dark. He said, oh, the ink is illegal. It's poisonous and we're going to have to bleed it out. I was like, what? <laughs> Luckily, 
when I actually went to get the work done, they didn't have to, whatever bleeding it out meant, they didn't have to do it, it just covered it up. So it's covered up with another lizard. Whether it glows through, I've never really checked. <laughs> but that was my souvenir. That was my souvenir from Tallinn, Estonia. Yes, what a great experience, John. <laughs> this is another example of some of the stupid things I've done. I could actually do a video, top 10 stupid things I've done and survived. <laughs> there's, there's loads of things I quite possibly could not have, like other people might not have been so lucky and not survived. There's, there's lists, lists and lists of stuff that I'm really lucky to be alive. <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> Here's to being alive. Cheers. Mm. So, Let's go then for another fragrance that I'm also wearing. Where is this? Here. It's Guerlain. It's my little atomizer of Le Plus Beau Jour de Ma Vie. I was smelling it today because I made a decant for Lizzie. And when I smelt it and I spilt some on my fingers as you do, and I was like, wow, I forgot how amazing this is. I love it. And so I decided that I was gonna wear it a bit later. I was already testing and reviewing that Bois d'Armand from Van Cleef and Arpels. So I didn't spray it on at that point, but I decided I wanted to, uh, to wear it. So I'm not fully wearing it because I've already got stuff here and stuff here. So I just did this arm with Le Plus Beaujour de Ma Vie. I haven't spoken about it for a short while, for a little while. So if I, you haven't heard me talk about it, it's orange blossom, vanilla. It's got like a slightly anacidic opening, a bit like a pastis French liqueur or perno for us Brits, but it's kind of sweet. It's got a sugared almond note to it. It's supposed to smell a little bit like a French wedding with the flowers and the, the sugared almond sweets that would go on the tables. And it's beautiful. The vanilla in it is stunning. It's mostly about Vanilla, the cat's at the door. It's mostly about vanilla in the dry down. If you, I should try and show you this. So she was bashing it. She was bashing it. What? She's not going in now. Right, let's let the stupid cat in. You're not stupid, are you, sweetie? Come on in. Okay. <laughs> Scott says, so sounds bloody scary to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that's it. So yeah, so Le Plus Beaujour de Ma Vie is on this arm and I just forgot because I've not worn it for a little while, how amazing it is. And it's made me realize so today I was testing Bois d'Armand from Van Cleef and Arpels. There's a couple of notes in common. There's almond, there's vanilla. Um, can't remember what else. I felt like there was something floral in there, even though it wasn't listed. And I wore that and I really enjoyed it. And I was like, oh, do you know what? I really want to buy it. And then when I smelled Le Plus Beaujour de Ma Vie, I thought, why would I ever choose that over this? And so there we go, I'm being sensible and I'm not buying it because I'm on a no buy. Chimes Reaper says, hi, my scent of the day is Insolence Eau de Parfum, so happy I made it for your life. Happy to have you here. Okay then, I've got, I think I've only got the one more. Oh, hello, sweetie. I've got sweetie on my lap now. What's the matter? What are you doing? Should we pop you to see if we can get you in? There we go then. There she is. Look at the camera, you never look. <laughs> well, you, it's like you're, you're reaching out and singing, isn't it? Hey. Right, where are you gonna go? So now I've got hairs everywhere, as always. I uh, don't knock my drink over. It's always the same, isn't it? It's like, oh, she's gonna knock the perfume over. Oh, she's gonna knock the drinks over. What are you doing over there? Hey, there goes one bottle. Come here, come on, come on. 
<laughs> Sal says, oh my, she's too adorable. <laughs> she's purring, so she's quite happy. Are you purring? Uh, Sal says, I wish I wasn't allergic to cats. Oh, she's gone. John Snow, Claire, this should be a 5,000 sprays tonight. Yeah. Well, that would get my collection down a little bit. I think my allergies might go a little bit up. My skin allergies might cause havoc. So we've got two more frags to mention. So basically these fragrances are just really special. That's all. They're just my favourites. Um, they're not top five from my collection. They just happen to be like the five that I've just quickly grabbed when I decided to do this stream. But that I love. Actually, one of them is not necessarily a favourite, but it's kind of a milestone or something. So another Galan here, of course, this is, this is my signature scent. It's the one I probably feel most comfortable wearing. Like I feel more like me wearing that than anything else. It's my insolence. It's my insolence. And it's, it's actually got similar notes to Le Plus Beaujour de Ma Vie when you think about it. Um, it's not, it's weird because they don't smell that similar. This is much softer, less sugary, fluffy, musky. The note is listed as almond blossom, whereas uh, Plue Beaujolais de Mavie has sugared almond. And I think there's quite a significant difference because of that, because this is a really fluffy, soft, whereas that kind of... Um, more sugary, not sharp, but sharper than the softness of this. But they have very similar notes, but they're kind of different. But anyhow, this is this is me. This makes it's clean, musky, fluffy, soft. It's vanillic. I think it's orange blossom and a bit of raspberry actually, yeah, so that's uh, another big uh, note difference, so uh, Le Plou doesn't have the raspberry. This has a raspberry, which gives a sharpness, but the sharpness sits with the raspberry, not the whole fragrance, if that makes sense. I love it. So this is this is a fragrance to wear when you reach 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> and let's have a little catchy up here. Sybil's here. Hi, Sybil. Thanks for popping in. And Brandon says, 5,000 sprays, let, hashtag let's get wet. Do you know what? I could do it, couldn't I? But how am I going to count 5,000 sprays? I mean, maybe 500. I don't know. 50. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, not, maybe if I picked up my cologne, my, my lighter cologne style fragrances. But still, I'm not good at counting. I'm totally going to lose count. Robert says, Claire, what's my discount on that Eeyore with a D? Oh, you saw that, did you? Um, I'll chat to you later about it. <laughs> uh, all about fragrances. Congrats on 5K. Thank you very much. John Snow says, haha, Brandon, dripping, soaking, very moist. <laughs> Brandon says, super moist. <laughs> no snows, no notes. Hello, Brian. Thanks for popping in. Juliet says hi. Hi, Juliet. And this is my insolence is sadly, sadly always not available. Just keep looking, Annie. It takes time. Be patient. It will come up somewhere on eBay or any other sort of secondhand site. Keep your eyes peeled. Set If you can set an alert, do that. And I know that Jimbo, DC Jim R, over in the States, he found... Uh, they were on Fragrance X. They, they were sold out very quickly. There was only four. He grabbed one. When I went to look, they were all gone again. So just keep looking. Keep on looking. There's one on in the UK at the moment on eBay. It's not cheap, but it's not over mega overpriced. It's a seventy. No, so it's a fifty ml bottle for about seventy five pounds. So it's not cheap, but I think it's worth it. That's because I know it and I love it. But um, if it's a blind buy, it's a bit of a risk at that price. 
Juliet says, I don't like the original insolence, EDT. It smells like detergent to me. Yeah, there's a bit of a sharpness in there, isn't there? And Arlise is here. Curious Perfumist says, hey everyone. Hi, Arlise. Happiness Sparkles Francis says, hello to everyone. And Da Vinci's Alchemist says, congrats Claire 5K. Thank you very much. Um, Ben's Perfumes, congrats my dear. Lots of love. Oh, thank you very much, Ben's Perfumes. Ben. <laughs> Brian says, how's the no by July going? So far, I have been very, very good. Not done anything naughty. Not bought anything. And Francis is still looking for my insolence as well. Annie has an alert on Fragrance X. And Heather says, hey, Claire, congrats. Hi, Heather, thank you. Right then, so I've got one more frag to talk about and then I'll just move on to some samples. Um, as I say, I don't want to hang around too long because I am a little bit tired. Uh, so, the final one, it's kind of like, I've put it here simply because it's a milestone in that it was my most expensive blind buy ever and thank God it was a success, so it's Blue Lotus. Have I got any room to spray it? Um, let's do it on the back of this hand. So Blue Lotus from Thai... Tioni Reinthal in Australia, based in Brisbane in Australia. And yeah, I did a live stream blind buy unboxing first impressions on this fragrance. And I was so nervous, it was ridiculous. But yeah, look at it, it's so gorgeous. And the smell is lovely. It's um it's a rich floral. There is ylang ylang as well as blue lotus. I can't remember the notes. But to me, it's like a rich, sweet, floral, exotic floral. So you've got the frangi well, the frangipani type scent, which is blue lotus. And then it's like, kind of got incense or resinous background, a little bit of vanilla. It's, it's nothing crazy groundbreaking, but it, is really nice and it's got a real depth to it it doesn't smell like like a typical beachy scent and I guess you would put this in a beachy you would normally put this in a beachy kind of ballpark just because of the florals the ylang ylang and the exotic floral aspect of it but it's got this kind of little bit of smokiness and this deep resin, resinous base that just gives it this not just exotic beach vibe but almost like exotic desert vibes like I said in my live stream it reminds me a little bit of Dendera from Centauri it's got that kind of dry desert feel so yeah pick that one for my five just because it's that crazy step that I took to buy something that was equated I think to about 170 pounds including the customs and shipping and everything and considering I hadn't smelled it that is the most ridiculous thing I've done so far when it comes to perfume and as I said earlier I've done a lot more ridiculous stuff non-perfume related oh. Uh, Francis says you took an expensive risk but lucky you love it uh, do I remember the Frenchie Penny in Cuba they were all over our resort I remember I thought they were jasmine I do remember walking to restaurants and bars in the evening and the scent of these bushes with these little flowers was gorgeous but I just assumed they were jasmine but maybe they were frangipani then because i didn't think i'd ever smelt real life frangipani but maybe they were yeah it was gorgeous mm, blue lotus is really good it's slightly edible it's just a touch gourmand love it so that is all my five frags for 5k they're just basically my kind of like five special fragrances i wanted to give a mention to 
And I've got some samples here. I'm just going to go through. I don't really have any paper though. Um, but we'll just go through a few samples. I've got some samples that Scott sent me, the Centurion. So we'll um, have a quick snifty poos. If I can find, yeah, we've got a notebook down here. That'll do. We've got a notebook. So let's just sniff some samples. And then I will call it a night because I just feel, feel like I need a nice early night tonight. Time to be sensible and grown up. So if you are watching this and you haven't signed in, I mean, I don't really, I can't believe I still have to say this. How many times do I have to say this? If you are watching this, you haven't signed in, you haven't said hello, you haven't just sent us a little emoji, then you do need to do that because it's health and safety. If the alarm was to go off, I wouldn't know you're here, would I? So do just give us a little, you can do a little wavy emoji, a, a thumbs up, um, or anything you want. Send me a poo if you want, or a, a frog, piggy. I like the little nostrils of the pig, you know that one? That's one of my favorite emojis. What's your favorite emojis, everyone? Give us some, uh, give us some emojis. Give us some like uncommon, under the radar emojis. Uh, Love sent NJ, 5k well, congrats, thank you very much. Um, Brian's just trying to get the lurkers out of the shadows, yes, shining the light on the lurkers. So what on earth is that one? Da Vinci's Alchemist has sent me uh, something green, it looks like a splat, but I'm not in, <laughs> is it a dragon? I don't, know, I don't think I've ever seen that. I love that one, Sal, I love the unicorn. Uh, Scott's got a man with a halo. You like that? Oh, it's a dragon. Okay. Heather, <laughs> we've got a lot there. Um, brilliant. I like the Starry Night one and the Caterpillar. I've not, I don't think I've seen that one before. Uh, so it's an Asian dragon, that one. Okay. So don't forget, if you're watching, I've just told you, it's health and safety. You have to say hi. Say it with an emoji or however you want. Oh, we've got a cow, of course, from John. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what that is from Brian. It looks like a blue face made out of clouds blowing a bubble. Uh, Chimes, we've got a Dracula and a Naughty Mermaid. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Dan says, congrats, Claire. Thank you very much. I've got a party in emoji there. Uh, is that a fart? I thought Brian's one look, does look like a fart, to be fair. Uh, Ben's here. Hi, Ben. Share. We're sharing our um, under the radar favorite emojis. So, Ben, if you want to con contribute an emoji, and uh, we need a beans emoji, we do. I think there is. I think I found some baked beans on my um, phone. Amy's giving us uh, someone doing a cartwheel. I think that is. So let's break some of this stuff that Scott sent me. So Scott sent me um, quite a few samples, um, so we'll just randomly pick them and spray them. I won't go too in depth, we'll just give you a few words on them. Uh, Heather, we've got some cat emo. I love the cats, the robot, we've got a, a sort of a computerised spider and I can't see that one, skinny, looks like a skinny person. <laughs> Francis, we've got uh, a cheers with two champagne glasses. I, I don't even know what I'm spraying here, but uh, let's read it out now. Brand's called Designer Shake. The fragrance is called Chic Shake Emerald Number 70. <laughs> so I don't know anything about this at all. I've never heard of the brand. My guess is, is it a clone house, Scott? I, I don't know. Um, it smells slightly familiar, if I'm honest with you. Uh, what is that? That's familiar. Yes, I know that. Don't tell me, though. Uh, so, Jackie's here. Hi, Jackie. She's wearing Slow Dive from Here and Green. I'm going to spray that one again. I definitely feel like I've smelt that before. So, my guess is it's a clone house. Um, oh, it's niche, says Scott. 
John is sharing a little piggy and a bat. That little piggy's cute. I don't know if I've got one of those on my phone. Heather's covered in gallivant. Nothing wrong with that. It's a good way to be. Right, that smells like a Creed fragrance. Um, it's one of it's something that Dan, Mr. Smelly's got. So it's sweet and fruity. Is it Millicent Imperial? No, it's not that. It's dry. Oh God, I've smelled that before. It's doing my head in. <laughs> Uh, da Vinci's Alchemist is testing January scent project, so I'm naked. <laughs> uh, I've smelled that before, and it's—I think it's a Creed, but it's—it's it, reminding me of stuff that Dan's had me smell, like maybe clones, pineapple vintage variations of stuff, but. I'm going to come back to it. So we're going to come back to that one. Chic Shake Emerald number 70. How can I describe it? So it's, it's um, it feels like it's got that dry, woodsy, creed thing that's kind of like the ambergris stuff, but it's fruity. <laughs> I'm opening the window because I'm overwhelmed by my own fragrances. Open the door even. <laughs> It's got this masculine thing about it, but it's fruity. So it's almost like masculine meets feminine. And it smells like a creed. I'm struggling because I think the problem is it's, it's so memorable. It could be Millicent Imperial. That's gonna be my guess. It's a, it's a fruity note, maybe it's watermelon. It's a, but it is quite nice. Yeah, I like this more than I remember how I like Millicene Imperial, if that makes sense, because I find that a bit too aquatic and annoying. Could be something completely different, but that's my guess. That's my guess. I'm going to pop that to the side for now. Um... Uh, love scent NJ better continue see my movie and good night all congrats again Claire thank you very much uh, good night have a good one enjoy the movie um, right so it doesn't look like Scott is giving me any clues unless I've missed something no it doesn't look like it okay right then We'll just smell something else. An Argent Provocateur Fatale. I'm not sure if I've smelled this before. I've got a sample of an Asian Provocateur, but I don't know if it's, I don't think it's this one. So I'm not sure if I've ever tried this one before. Oh, that's nice. Um, it's a fizzy. Fizzy pink fruits. It's like um, grapefruit champagne. Maybe peach as well. Like uh, maybe a cocktail that's made of peach, grapefruit, champagne. Fizzy pink, sweet, girly. I haven't tried this before. The one I tried from Argent Provocateur wasn't that nice. It wasn't that great. Jackie, not familiar with Argent Provocateur. Yeah, this is a fun, frivolous, light, fresh, zingy, fizzy, pink, fruity, peachy scent. Quite pretty from, from first sniff. I'm not going to dwell on anything too long because I don't want to be up too late. So we're going to try the next one then, which is Made in Pigalle. 
and it's called Gaspard in Raspail. Gaspard in Raspail. I have no clue what that's all about. Um, Scott says all he knows on the first one it was it came from Scent City. Oh, okay, no problem. We can always uh, look it up, research it. Right, Gaspard in in Raspail from Made in Pigalle. Um, night, night cell. Dan says, I'm not familiar with anything Claire talks about. Oh, okay. Well, you can blame all of this on Scott. Scott sent them to me. Um, uh, Gaspard in Pigail. No, Gaspard in Raspail. My God, I mean, what names have we got him? The brand is called Made in Pigal. And then it's called Gaspard in Raspel. I mean, it's just a mouthful. Who, if you're walking down the street and someone says, you smell good, you, you're not going to want to have to say that if they ask you what you're wearing. So this is, uh, I think it's a Neroli scent. It smells like a, it might be Neroli and Pettigrain, but it's very clean and musky and a little bit soapy. That's mostly what I'm getting is, um, I would say it's Neroli maybe pettigrain it's got that bitter a little bit bitter it smells like a cologne maybe some lemon maybe some bergamot it's, it feels like a cologne but it's kind of like musky and soapy as well so i'm going to leave that one there uh oven cleaner vibe no no but i don't get that i know you don't really enjoy citruses because it really reminds you of cleaning stuff John but that doesn't work if it's a pure lemon scent it might do and anything piney makes me think of like toilet cleaners but I'm fine with most citruses I quite enjoy them yeah that's getting sweeter now like but it's still very much it's like a citrus it's like all the citruses together lime lemon bergamot neroli Jackie says, I like orange flower. Like, I love blind sniffing. This is fun. Sense with Hillary last night, 16 at Yara Centre. Oh, I need to catch up. I, I need to catch up on Hillary's live. I still haven't sit, finished the one where they did the big squirt. Just, there's not enough time. So that was, I quite like that as a citrusy scent. Um, Uh, first is a woody, aromatic lemon, clary, sage, bergamot, orange, jasmine, lot, lot, lily of the, no, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, cedar. Um, the first one was that, the uh, the one I said smells like a Creed clone. Uh -huh. John likes orange flower, he says, weirdly. <laughs> Don't think that's weird. Next one then, Kat Von D. Sinner. I have heard, I've heard good stuff about this and you can buy it quite cheaply. I think, could be wrong. Kat Von D. Sinner. So, little spray on the paper. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's a heavy one. Um, I think that's a heavy patchouli. It's patchouli, but it's mixed with a light, fresh citrus. It's kind of weird. And it almost takes it in a urinal. <laughs> well, it, it's weird. There's a combination of very dark and very light notes together at the same time. Like, And it makes it smell like wine. It smells like white wine. Yeah, it's not urinal. It's, it's white wine, almost vinegar. My guess is that will get better. It started off feeling like heavy patchouli. Now it's really lightening up. It's quite nice. I'd like to see what it does on skin, actually. Jon Snow says, dark we after too many wines. <laughs> yeah. It's actually quite nice, which is was strange because the first time I smelled it, I was like, oh, it's like it's a really heavy patchouli, but it, it doesn't feel like that anymore. But it does smell... Quite, it's like wine or cider. Interesting that one. I need to try that on skin. Um, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. We 
we've got Lalique Amethyst. I've been dying to try this one. So many girls on YouTube are buying this at the moment, or, or that it's like a Domino's situation. Like every time you watch another reviewer's bought Amethyst because of other reviewers. And now finally I can smell it because I like the bottle very much. And I like the sound of it, but let's see, let's see now. Oh, not quite what I expected. So this one's all about red fruits. I know, I don't know individual notes, but I've heard enough people talk about it now to know that it's all about red fruits, dark fruits. And I can smell like a, a fresh kind of cassis note, which is the, I think it's cassis is black currant. So it's almost green as well. So it's not just red and black berries. It's like a slightly green sharpness to it. So it's fresh. I can see why quite a few people say it's not for everyone. And I can see that this isn't a generic sweet fruity floral, certainly not at the moment. Um, it's a little bit sharp. A little bit acidic I think the berries are coming off quite acidic almost like a hairspray like element to it it's, you can smell berries you can smell berries slightly bitter green element to it it's coming off like hairspray but it smells quite natural at the same time I need to try that on skin I feel like paper's not doing it justice Um, Margie, Claire, what makes sense sharp? Well, it can be lots of different elements, but I mean, if, if something's got sharp, the citruses can obviously be very, be very sharp. Things like lemon can be super sharp. Sometimes things can just come off like acidic. Uh, like if you imagine smelling, you know, if you get your hair permed or dyed, chemicals like that can be very sharp. And sometimes things in fragrances can give off elements of ammonia, bleach, chlorine, that kind of stuff. But it could just be the sharpness of, uh, of a green note, like the acidity of the, of the sort of green leaves sort of note or whatever. I'm not sure. I think it's probably, it's possibly coming from the black currant or some of the berries. It's almost like the, it's not just black currant and various berries, but the the bushes as well, the green stuff. And I think it might be the green stuff maybe that's giving it the actual sharpness. But I find sometimes when things are sharp on paper, they can soften out on skin. And on skin, your movement from very top notes into settling in is quicker. Whereas on paper, there's nothing to warm anything up. So it would take longer for that to, to mellow out, if that makes sense. Right, we'll pop that one to the side then. I'm really glad to have tried that. Thank you, Scott, for these. This is wicked. So we've got, uh, oh, we've done that, Cat Von D Sinner. We have got Gua 1920, Magia or Magia, M-A-G-I-A. -A. I won't, that's what, what you can see. I do not know anything about this one. Uh, Sybil says she also wanted to try Amethyst. Um, Chine said, oh, I just ordered that one, the Lalique. <laughs> Jackie, Lalique is hit and miss for me. I hear this one is good. Um, Dan has given me a zombie with a green face. Yay. <laughs> And Dan says, I think Claire is ignoring my foolishness. No, I'm not. I'm just, um, I guess I'm trying to keep it quick so that I don't sit here for two hours and end up late to bed again. <laughs> uh, Margie says, thank you. Good to know. No problem. And Jackie, oh my God, be right back. My cat is trying to fight a neighbor's cat. Oh dear. Hope you can get them separated. Um... And I've got a cat face from Dan. Thank you, Dan. So don't forget, if you're watching and you haven't signed in, you do need to do so. I will find out who you are 
and I will send you a snotty email worded exactly like the sort of email you get from your boss when you're in trouble. So it's probably for the best you just sign in. Better for you, it's better for me. So let's spray this then, and this is Magia or Magia from Bois 1920. Oh dear. Um, no, I don't like this one. Um, not on not on the top notes. I've smelt things like this before. Oh, thank you, Margie. That is very kind of you. That is going to the Animal Rescue Happy Endings because we all like a happy ending, don't we? Thank you very much, Margie. That is much appreciated. Um, this Magia one, it's actually, it's reminding me of a creed. It's reminding me of Silver Mountain Water from Creed. And I don't like it. And I don't like Silver Mountain Water. <laughs> And also Himalaya, I, I get them two mixed up, but they have that, I think it's called Hydra D, is it Hydra D Mercenal? It's also in Green Irish Tweed, which is this um, synthetic, slightly aquatic green note that I just don't like. And that's what I'm getting in massive doses here. Uh, so I don't like that. That's all I can smell because it's so annoying that there's other stuff in here, but <laughs> I'm being, I'm going to be all dramatic. But it, it, if there's a note that really annoys me, I struggle then to get past it to see what else is in there. I mean, I'll, I'll, I can try, but um, I'm just getting fake mountain water, <laughs> mountain air even. So silver mountain water to me smells like cold air that's hard to breathe. Like it's so cold, it's hard to breathe. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like thick, green, slightly sweet, green, mossy, aquatic without it having that sharp sea breeze saltiness. Almost like a murky, green, stagnant pond. <laughs> so, safe to say, that's not my favourite. <laughs> yeah, that's not my favourite. Um, so we've got one more here, and it's Bois 1920s Cannabis. Let's have a little look to see at your comments here. Dan says, it's Saturday, Claire. <laughs> uh, Dan says, can I still get an email? You can get an email, Dan. I'll send, I'll send you an, an email. Uh, a shitty email. That's what we. I don't know. Do you call them that at work? Just call them a shitty email. Like if you get one of those emails from HR or, or your boss or someone in authority, it's, it's sort of passive aggressively telling you off and suggesting that if you need help, you can come and find them. Yeah, I'll give you one of those if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Bin it says Dan um, Bin it says Scott no I, I mean I'll just pass it on someone will probably like it Dan might like it uh, Mr Smelly I'll pass it on to him Amanda hello Amanda nice to see you uh, Dehydromersonal so I got that slightly mixed up Dehydromersonal so Amanda for those of you that don't know uh, she has the company a niche indie brand called Bido, which you can see at the end of her name, Bido. And she just reopened her online shop. I've got two of her fragrances, Chez Noir and um, Chouette. No, I haven't got Chez Noir. I've got Chouette and Hibou, the two owls. And they're really gorgeous. They're very um, outgoing fragrances. So check her out. You can get samples as well. Uh, Jackie says, sorry about that. Back had to take a garden hose to them. Oh my goodness, that's not good. <laughs> John Snow says, I bet you and HR are on fine terms, Claire. <laughs> no, we're, we're fine. Um, we're fine. <laughs> uh, Elaine says, congrats on 5K. Thank you very much, Elaine. 
And Brendan, Brendan Magic TV is here. Sorry I'm a bit late to this. I'm here, want to say congrats to Claire. Thank you very much, Brendan. And Brendan is an awesome magician. So go check out his YouTube and his Instagram as well. Um, you, he shows you how you can do certain tricks and it's just an eclectic mix of fun magic stuff. <laughs> Brendan says, you're going to overtake me soon. I don't think so. <laughs> Right, let's spray this one then. So we've got Bright 1920 Cannabis. So let's let's get high, shall we? Let's see if it actually smells like cannabis. Which, of course, none of us know what that smells like, do we? Oh, my gosh. It actually does a little bit. It actually does. Um... Because usually things like that, they, they never really do. Um, Jackie says, oh, I saw the video where you and Brendan went and got bespoke frags. Yes. Yes, Jackie, well remembered. Um, what's the name of that brand again? Um, I can't, off the top of my head. Um, I've forgotten. That's really terrible. I've actually got the bottle literally just over there. It's a, it's a nice fragrance. Experimental. Yes. Experimental perfumes. Um, I've got the bottle just over there. Mine is a rhubarb rose citrus concoction. It's really nice. <laughs> Jackie laughing at me. Um, right, so cannabis then. Shall we talk about how cannabis smells? It actually smells like cannabis. Not smoky so much. Probably is, actually is a little bit smoky, but it's, it's like putting your nose in a bag of weed, which obviously none of us has ever done. But um, if you imagine that you put your nose in a bag of weed, green, it's like green and fresh. So it feels like a whole load of herbs. It's, it's uh, smoke the herb. It's very herbal, but I feel like there's a little bit of citrus going on in here, which is kind of freshening it up. I wouldn't be comfortable wearing that because it's actually too close to the smell of cannabis. And I don't want to go around smelling like cannabis myself. But I don't get why you would want to. I wouldn't mind if there was a little touch of a cannabis note within a fragrance. That would be fine. But to actually smell like cannabis isn't something I'm looking to achieve. It's something almost... Um, barbecue about this as well though so it's like um someone's barbecuing saveloy sausages not right here but three gardens down and then just creeping in the doorway but mostly i've got my nose in a bag of weed <laughs> um Brian says he hates the smell of cannabis. Brendan says, I don't think I'd want to smell like this. I don't think you would. I don't think many people would. Um, Jackie says, like sticky cannabis, the druggy kind or hippie hemp oils. It's like um, weed, like the dry um, the dry little bits of, of the actual plant or buds or whatever they are. Um, that's how it smells to me. <laughs> Dan says, I think Claire's trying to recall the 80s now. <laughs> I don't think I did anything like that in the 80s. I was born in 77, so yeah, it was early 90s. <laughs> early 90s. Chine says, Olive in Canada, that's all I smell when I walk outside. Um, oh, I live. <laughs> yeah, there's certain places if you, around here, if you walk around, you generally catch whiffs of it. Uh, actually where I work we've got a, a like back we back onto a cricket pavilion field and a park with benches and the benches are right by where we work so all the kids gather so when I'm on a night shift usually uh, the kids will gather on the benches and they'll be smoking so you walk out the work door and you get a massive wafts of cannabis John Snow says could you be more southern I don't know what I said to make you say that. <laughs> Jackie says, I don't like the sticky, real druggy kind of cannabis. It smelled hemp oil and that was kind of just green hay-like note. Yeah, I think this is like proper, 
it's calming down a bit. It's not so much herbal cannabis now. It's more, more smoky. Still green, but it is not as cannabis-like as it was to start with. Green, woody. My guess is we've probably got vetiver in here. Um, whether there's some galbanum to give it that dry greenness. Probably a, a, a bundle of herbs. All sorts of herbs. I'm not good with herbs to sort of tell you what's what, but feels like mixed a mishmash of herbs, a little bit of smoke, a touch of sausage, touch of saveloy. <laughs> and Margie says that's my year, 77. 77 was a good year. <laughs> And Dan was born in 70, so I'm senior here, I think. Scary thought, isn't it? You're the grown-up then, Dan. You have to lead by example. And Jackie says, Dan, I'm only two years younger than you. Margie says, I didn't do that stuff until 94. Oh, it's good that you remember. <laughs> I don't know why 92 is ringing a bell, but... Um... I'm not sure why. Uh, yeah, so this cannabis is a is a hard pass for me. I'm not a fan, but I get the concept and I, I like the artistry. I think it's very clever what they've done. Uh, but I'll pass that sample on. I think so. The ones that are in this move, let's move off the ones I'm not keen on, and I'm just going to revisit the ones. I might as well revisit them all. Um, the Meiji one, what 1920 still reminds me of Silver Mountain Water with the d hydro or the hydro d with that in it not 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 a fan it's not bad but it's better it's not quite as i don't know it's something about it. it's a bit cloying is not quite the right word but annoying something a bit annoying about it next one is the lalique amethyst that's definitely nicer it's lost that sort of sharp greenness it's still there but it's calmed down it's starting to feel more like a, a, a normal designer fragrance, or oh, it's closer to a designer fragrance now. It's almost like a rose, like a Dior fragrance, like a Dior, um, Miss Dior. It's, it feels like a rose and red berry concoction that's kind of light and fresh and not that sweet, actually. I don't feel like there's any vanilla or anything sort of in the background. It just feels like berries and roses. Pretty. Maybe even a touch of violet. Not an obvious violet, but it's like it's like everything's sitting on a violet. It's actually nice. I, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying that one on my skin. So we'll pop that one over to the left. To the left, to the left. And then we've got the Sinner, Kat Von D Sinner. Yeah. That's sweet. So that one was the one that I thought smelled like wine earlier. Doesn't smell like wine anymore. It's really deepened up. So it's fruity. It's like a dark fruit. Dark fruity floral. Like a gothic. And a, Kat Von D is obviously sort of gothic in her aesthetic, but she's a tattoo artist, very cool, very edgy. And it's like she had to compromise with the marketing team. So probably she wanted something darker and edgier, but the marketing team said, yeah, but we want to sell bottles. So it feels like there's a compromise of, it's actually quite nice, but it does lean dark and edgy without it without it being difficult it's quite nice i'd like to try it on skin but it's um it's dark it's dark red fruity fruity thing with i feel like there's a, a maybe rose in here it feels red dark red or purple even that i can't really say much more um fruity Still almost boozy, almost whiny, like dark red wine. 
but not as whiny as it was. It smelled like yellow, yellow wine. It smelled like white wine to start with. Now it's like um, sangria. So it's fruity, the color of sangria with the fruitiness as well. A little bit like a sangria. Yeah, yeah, so I like that. I'm gonna try that one on skin as well. Um, everyone's talking about ages. Uh, just having a quick scan through your comments here. Heather says she's three years younger than Dan. <laughs> um, Brian says he just came here to feel young again. John Snow says, baby face Brian is a whippersnapper. <laughs> Empty Sense says, 70 EII, -E -I. one year later, us fragpars and fragmars. <laughs> Dan says, Claire attracts the older crowd. You wouldn't believe it, yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, I'm trying to, sorry, I'm just trying to keep up with your comments and it's scrolling off. Um, Katrin's here, hi Katrin. She says, I'm old too. <laughs> Dan says, I refuse to be a grandpa, so I just don't, didn't have kids. Um, da Vinci's alchemist, I'm probably old, but I'm far too immature to know the difference. Yeah, I think most of us can say that. Hilary says, hey y'all. Hi Hilary. And a purple heart we have. Um, and Jackie says, I, Brian, yeah, I could see Kat Von D enjoying wine, but white wine, that sounds like a bit suburban for her. Yeah. I, I could see her sort of having a, a, a rich red wine with maybe a, some blood of her partner mixed in with it or something. <laughs> Sweetie, what's that noise you're making? Can you hear her? She's making some noises. Um, Hilary says she's a 1990 gal. Young whippersnapper. Um, doo -doo -doo. Right, okay. Uh, what are we gonna do next? Oh, we're sniffing, we've got some more here. Uh, we've got, I'm gonna re-sniff the uh, Chic Shake Emerald number 70. So this is the one I thought smelled like a Creed, but I wasn't entirely sure. No, it's not a Creed. Um, it's a heavy, heavy synthetic fragrance. A uh, massive dose of Ambroxin in here. Uh, a very annoyingly overtly synthetic fragrance. I don't know what it's supposed to be. It lost, it had a nice juicy fruity top note that reminded me of Millicent Imperial, but it didn't have the annoying uh, sharp sea breeze aspect of it. But it's lost all of that. Uh, there's a touch of sweetness, like there might be a little tiny bit of vanilla and the, a little bit of the fruitiness is hanging on, but Ambroxan and probably some other sort of more synthetic woodsy things that the modern synthetics, like the dry down of Jeremy's office. I don't know if it's ISOE Super, but it, there's those very, very popular, mass appealing synthetics doesn't smell bad if you like that. If you like the dry down of Aaron Terrence Hughes fragrances, then this is a, like a better blended version. But it is basically just mostly synthetic woodsy stuff, which isn't my thing. It's not my bag. So I will pass that one on. Um, Jackie says, the scent does not sound good to me. John Snow says, meow. Yeah, sorry. Um, 
and Jackie says, I've been playing with the molecule since Love 4 and 5. I can't remember what's what. Um, I know one because I've got one, which is I Saw Super, which I like. Um, but I don't wear it on its own. don't wear it much at all, actually. I don't really reach for it, but I like the way it smells. And the performance is crazy. Um, oh, sandalwood and cashmere. And, okay, I need to smell cashmere because I still don't think I understand what that one smells like. They're good though, I think they're good if you're into fragrances and you just want to learn about notes. You, if you can find somewhere selling the molecule fragrances, oops, battery's low. If you can find someone selling or a shop that sells them, then you can actually get to smell what Ambroxan smells like, what Isoe Super smells like, what the vetiver, they use a vetiver, um, one of them is a vetiver synthetic, and the sandalwood and the cashmere. In. Okay, um, so let's revisit Fatal. Fatal from Agent Provocateur. Yeah. This is the closest out of everything we smell to what it smells like when you walk through Debenhams or House of Fraser. So this is a kind of like a generic ladies fragrance now. It smelled a little bit... The opening, I think, was fresher and more fun. I think I remember saying it smelled like a um, grapefruit and peach fizzy cocktail with champagne. Now it's starting to smell like a fruity floral that you almost can't describe because it's so nondescript. It's still nice. It's almost got a touch of bubble gum, which I quite like. Very fruity, a mishmash of different fruits, touch of vanilla. Not, it's not overtly sweet though. It's quite sweet. It's mostly fruity, with a touch of vanilla. Probably there's a touch of jasmine, orange, orange blossom, something like that. It's nice, but if this was a juicy couture fragrance or any celebrity scent, I wouldn't be surprised. So that. It's nice. I will try it on skin just to see what happens. But yeah, I don't dislike it at all. It just might be a little bit boring for my taste, if that makes sense. Because I'm a snob. At least I own it. Then we've got finally the one that's called <laughs> Gaspard in Raspile, made in Pigalle, is the company. That's interesting. So that was the one that smelt like a cologne and it it smells like the dry down of a cologne now. <laughs> um, so it's lost all the freshness of the top notes of all the citruses but it's nice. You can still smell the citruses but they're now clinging on with all they've got to a kind of like woodsy muskiness and a touch of sweetness. It's nice. I have a feeling it's going to behave like a cologne and bugger off quite quickly. Quite natural. I would. I said earlier I thought it was Neroli and Pettigrain. I was more confident of the Neroli. Now I'm turning that around and I'm more confident of the Pettigrain. But yeah, it's um, natural smelling cologne style fragrance. It actually reminds me of, a it does remind me a little bit of Slut by Aaron Terrence Hughes. It's got, it's definitely got some, the same notes or some notes that are similar. Uh, probably not that exciting, it's, it's a cologne at the moment that's really all I get so that's P made in Pigal Gaspard in Raspail wouldn't surprise me if that's quite um, uh, mostly naturals maybe that's why everything's disappearing so quickly but it's nice but it is something that you would have smelt before so that is all of them. I think I am going to leave it there because I'm tired and my battery's running out and all that stuff. So that just leaves me to say 
thank you so much everyone for watching and for getting me to the 5,000 subscriber mark. It's taken me a while but I'm here and I'm, I'm growing so any growth is good right? <laughs> so thank you so much, thank you for joining in tonight's live. I might have maybe some exciting information for you about something but I'm waiting on uh, that to be confirmed if I do I will share it with you all of course um, but in the meantime look after yourselves and have a good evening or day or whatever it is you are <laughs> wherever you are in your day at the moment and I will see you all very very soon